I'm gonna wait for a few seconds to see if everything goes green. I think Twitter just kicked in. Show screen, streaming, let's double check. I don't always stream on Twitter, so I guess I'm gonna check it on the pro. Yep, okay, it's good to go. So and YouTube should be fine. So today's stream will be about advent of code problems. I'm going to tackle maybe eight days worth of problems. Uh, I think they do it in two steps. Every day you have two challenges. So I'm going to be tackling at least one for each day if we have time you know, available for all of them. So I'm planning to stream for roughly five hours, maybe six. We'll see. So let's get started. Here's the first days. Preamble. So Santa's reindeer typically eat regular reindeer food, of course, but they need a lot of magical energy. Is it a link? It is a link. Which goes back to day 25, 2018. Okay, so let's not sidetrack. For that, their favorite snack is a special type of star fruit. Star. Okay. So I'm guessing, I remember reading somewhere that each day you collect a star, and maybe two stars sometimes. So the, mo yeah, there you go. This is what I remember reading from earlier. So when we accomplish these challenges, we will get a star. So that's the fruit we are feeding the reindeers. So they need they need enough magical energy to do their job, okay. Although the elves assure you that the grove has plenty of fruit, you decide to grab any fruit you see along the way just in case. Okay, collect stars by solving puzzles. Two puzzles will be made available on each day in the advent calendar. The second puzzle is unlock when you complete the first. So we gotta do the first puzzle. And the jungle must be too overgrown and difficult to navigate in vehicles or access from the air. The elves expedition traditionally goes on foot. Your boats approach land, the elves begin taking inventory of their supplies. One important consideration is food, in particular the number of calories each elf is carrying, your puzzle input. The elves take turns writing down the number of calories contained by the various meals, snacks, rations, etc. that they have brought with them, one item per line. Each elf separates their own inventory from the previous elf's inventory, if any, by a blank line, which is this blank area. So this is the first elf's uh, uh, calorie or like items, different like meals, rations, snacks, whatever. This is what the first elf has. And this is like, okay, separator. The second elf, elf only has 4,000 calories, maybe with just one item. So that way, this list represents the calories of the food carried by five elves, because we have one, two, three, Four and five health. Okay. So the first health is carrying food with 1,000, 2,000, and 3,000 calories, a total of 6,000 calories. The second, second health is just one food item, 4,000 calories. Okay, got it. should be 11, 24,000 for this guy. And the last one, again, one food item with 10k calories. Awesome. So, in case the elves get hungry and need extra snacks, they need to know which elf to ask. They would like to know how many calories are being carried by the elf carrying the most calories. In the example above, this is the 24,000 calories, the guy that is carrying the 24,000. To find the elf carrying the most calories, 
Um, how many total calories is that elk? Now, when I first read this the other day, uh, it's as if that question has already been answered because that's part of the explanation. But what they actually mean is, um, where do I find it? Somewhere here, I remember seeing an input file, some like a link to the text file. I think we do that by logging up. Yeah, there you go. So this is uh, the new section here. When you log in, this these two lines open up. So you need to use this input and answer this question based on this input. So you type the answer here. Because without that, the answer seems like it's obviously the 24,000, the fourth elf, but it is. So this is basically a recipe. Input file, let me open. So this is a long file. And we have first elf, second elf. This guy has a lot of items. So we need to figure out a way to um, parse this file. So this could be a text file. They don't actually say any methods. Like you could, you could be using any programming language. You could be using that input maybe as a text file. Maybe I don't know JSON. If you, you could be smart about this. You could be um, treating each those uh, each one of those. Uh, Groups, let's call like this is just one elf. Um, this is this could be uh, an array of array problem, right? And also, let's keep in mind that uh, I want to use Godot engine GD script to solve these problems for no particular reason. This is a very typical JavaScript problem, actually. This could be a good interview question. So let me first start by. Uh, I think I have this in my. Let me uh, download that. Project folder actually. It's GitHub. It's here. I have input txt. There you go. So that's that. Then I should most likely open the project folder for you. Okay, so we have uh, a blank Godot project. Just imported this input txt, which is not going to be visible here. I may as well put that in data for something like that. I feel like we are going to have multiple so this is day one's input. Maybe I should really one. Stick that here. It's the file. Um, I think I see one or two people in the chat. Well, not necessarily chat, but in the stream headcount. So you want to say hello? Feel free. I may have Turkish viewers, I may switch languages here and there, but I'll try to keep it as long as possible. Mm. So we're not going to need any kind of scene. Maybe we'll, we'll have one label where we output the results. Uh, just thinking, how should I approach this? So we have data. So let's create a script folder. Maybe some script. Hello, Art Fiend, and Volkan Karakash, I believe. She, I think, doesn't show up. Welcome. 
all this day one. Put a dash here, so it's easy. Dash here too. Let's be consistent. So how are you guys doing today? From the name, I'm guessing Volkan is from Turkey. Art Fiend, I have no idea. And first spam of the day. Let's block that user. Okay, let's open the script. This is this is where we are going to read that text file and do something with it. Now, if I recall. something else script where we could do auto run we could actually still do that with tool and this doesn't need to be tool let's do something like this something weird now, i don't want to attach this to any root node is what Godot was just showing me complete. Let's add this as a load script. Uh, but I still need to run this project, right? If I do this, find you. Yeah, let's just create a dumb scene here for the sake of that. Because it's kind of awkward to use GDScript to solve these problems. Yes, from Turkey, Artpaint from US, so welcome. I'm using 3.5.1. Um, I didn't want to take any risks with Godot 4 in case, uh, you know, the, it's still in beta. Um, I could be using it for more uh, interesting projects. But not now. Are you using Godot 4 by the way? Let's call this day one. Why can't I type? So let's uh, attach our script to this. Here's this control node. Here's the script. Let's take this away. Oh, I actually didn't add this. I populated it, but I never added. Anyway, that's not going to matter anymore because this is now what I want to designate as the main scene, which is going to be save, select current. That's it. And we have the output weird. So while we are doing that, I may as well add a label here. Maybe two labels and stick them inside each box. I have two labels. One is going to say answer. And the other one will be the answer itself. Right now, we don't have answer yet so let's call it try harder with the answers yep main is 3.5 so this is mainly about gd script it is uh, like i want to practice advent of code problems so they have uh, really interesting questions here so in case you missed it uh, uh, day one's problem is given input like this where each section here is an elf and this is the number of calories they carry uh, like maybe they have soup bread whatever so each elf is carrying a sum of items and we want to find the elf with the highest the total sum for that elf we want to pick that elf because he's the guy who's going to feed us the uh, most calories. So it's a parsing problem in a sense. And then I usually see this sort of problem with JavaScript. 
a good interview question. So this is the format that I'm going to follow, I think. Uh, once I figure out the answer, I'm going to put it here. It's going to be the case. So in day one GD, I should read the file from data. Instead of uploading weird. Let's do file. Do. Uh, new. Let's call this day one. I normally read JSON files, not TXT files. I may convert this file to a JSON file. Why not? Make my life easier. But at least I want to be able to read the content of this file. So, day one open what's the path the path is um let's get some help here copy path it was day dash day hyphen one um input txt the read mode is going to be you just showed it okay uh, read so we just opened it. A one. Get as text. This is gonna give us the whole text. I'm not gonna bother with error checking. I'm assuming it's always opening. There's no production concern here, whether the file is locked or whatever. Like we'll just immediately see if it's done or not. So when we get the text. This is the content. Let's just shamelessly call content. Let's print out the content. Let's see if this works. It does work. So there are so many lines. The print is uh, the output is overflown, but we get the result. Now we can treat this as. A string parse parsing problem and say well okay if we have content and use split and the delimiter will be the uh, line breaks right so this is going to give us an array and try this let's see what this gives us um, we are moving in the right direction but i think uh, that new line should be doubled because this is for each uh, number, there is an end of line character, which is going to start the next line. What we are interested in is the new line, new line to get. So this is most likely the right formula to this and I see each line is one elf so this is the guy with uh, multiple items so if I clear and rerun this I'm gonna scroll all the way to the top and I'll try to find okay so this part is good the fact that this is here is not good Actually, no, that is kind of good because those two are before comma. That's what I wanted. The representation is awkward, but the, the logic works out. The next time I see comma, I should be able to see these three items. So, And that is in fact like that. So now we are parsing. And this is so that I don't want to convert the text to JSON. Like I could be inputting an array too. Let's uh, minimize the number of steps. Am I open to taking new questions? Uh, I am open. I may not be able to answer due to sticking with the theme of the stream. But feel free to ask. And you know, asking is always free. You may not. So ask away. 
at some point in the future I may do like uh, just you know no uh, topic stream ask anything you want but today is definitely not that but if it's a quick thing I may be able to Let's see by the way um, last week I streamed and the one before that was April so that was that's like eight months apart I'm still configuring and remembering certain things I'm hoping the background music is not too loud because I'm using new software and I'm trying to see if things work out let me know so we have an array I think the struggle here is you gotta further split each entry in this array. Something like um, maybe I'll call this some other smart name. The crown sound is good. Awesome. Good. So naming is always hard. So what would you call this whole list? Uh, okay, let's stick with content for now. When I split further down, so now I'm gonna try to sp split each else inventory, right? So now I think I'm gonna call it inventory. When we did this, it this is going to be Actually, I kind of want to be a little bit cheeky about this. I think I can get away with this. Let that be the content. Never assume it will work. Clear. Run. Okay. So chaining is possible. Sometimes uh, in some of the file methods, uh, chaining is not possible so in this case I was able to get away with that so I could save one variable name so now what I'm going to do is inventory what I want to do is um, I want to split each element of content array so right now our content is something like this some numbers well some numbers Although we don't quite see it, there is this sort of character, some other numbers. And sometimes it's just like this. If the third elf has four items, it's it's actually like this. It's formatted like this. So what I want to do is I want to split again, but with only one end of line for each chunk like this so I need to be I cannot just type this this would not work because this would try to split the whole array what we are trying to split is each item in the array and we gotta store them somewhere that's what I thought I would do right away in inventory. So for okay, it's forming up much better in my mind. So we actually have elves here, okay? Or elf in elves, because this is the whole elves, okay? So we have an elf here with this sort of nutrition content or inventory, right? So we want to 
split that else entry. This is going to give an array so that in the end this is going to look like well, in each loop I'm kind of pretending that this is what's happening. Instead of this, it's going to turn into this. We will have an array of array. This is just itself. So basically we are turning the uh, end of lines to Thomas. Well, it's not a string replacement, but the data structure is changing. So now we can run proper for loops to get the sum of this array. That's how we would know how many calories an elf is carrying. So we could ask that guy to feed us. So you will ask me again when I do general. See, I would like that. Uh, You know what, I think you should ask your question so that uh, I would have time to think about it. That way if other people ask me similar or maybe completely different questions, I may have much better idea how much time I would require. Because maybe I'll do it, um, I don't know, next week or I would dedicate an hour before or after the uh, regular schedule. So it would help me formulate time for that. So there is no name for this yet, but this is sort of the total inventory. So for each elf, we gotta store this somewhere. So that will be inventory. So inventory will be an empty array. And every time we split, we are getting arrays like this, which is going to be appended to the inventory. So this is, of course, causing problem. So let's comment it out. Append. This is what we want to store in the inventory. Now, put it this way. After these three lines, After these three lines, inventory will resemble something like this. Which means we can actually observe it. You behave yourself, run, that's it. So now we have an array of uh, arrays. In it. So here is one array. This is not elf number something. He's carrying five items. This elf is carrying a lot of items. So now we have to... We have to add up all these calories and say, well, this elf is actually carrying the total sum of this as calories. Kind of a fun problem. Now, Question is, if I'm reading this explanation or description correctly, there will be a second part of this. It's two phases, I believe. So the first part is, how many total calories is that elf carrying? So we gotta find the elf carrying the most calories. Find that. Um, how many total calories is that elf carrying? Now, in in this description part, it's easy to be tricked here. Like, it is specifically asking about the calories, not the elf. But of course, to calculate this, you kind of find which elf in the list has the most calories. I'm guessing whether the second part of the question will be asking, so which particular elf? So that's a later problem, but we may be tackling that here. You know, you kind of say, well, let's ID these elves. 
first elf, it's this many calories, fifth elf, whatever, like it's going in that order. And uh, you kind of get two answers at the same time. That could very well be a dictionary or an array, because array will be the, it's already indexed. So the next step here is, as we are split, sp uh, splitting the uh, content or the else, right? Instead of dumping this array here, we can already do something with this. Array. If I recall, there are some new functions in GD script concerning arrays. Uh, they might be in GD script 2, which is in Godot 4, but uh, let's see. They might be in GD script. Like it would be, I think, unrealistic to expect some function here. So we could easily sum it up. Uh, so when we do elves split, this is an array. So let me just take this down here. Here. So when we split, we are splitting the food, right? So for each item in this elves food list. We are going to add the food's calorie content to total calories that elf is carrying. So right now this elf is carrying zero calories and we are going to say whatever that item is Whereas like this calorie content, it's going to be added to the number of calories. And when you are done with the whole sum, then that first elf is going to be carrying that many calories. Now this should give us, let's scroll up. So when I run this again, instead of seeing an output like this, I should be seeing, you try to do the math in my mind today. 37, 38. So I should be seeing 13 thousand to 86. And also I should be seeing some of this, which is going to be 18,492 plus 17,004 plus 17. 38, 37, 3, 3, 4, okay, and the rest, so let's do, okay, I'm doing something here, item itself is so if this was giving an array Did I get ahead of myself? Let's see, um, when I edit this or appended this to inventory, inventory was showing an array of base. So that each item in that array is the calorie. I cannot add string to integer. So this is integer. Oh, okay. Um, I think, yeah, this is this is something that happens. Uh, unfortunately, old output is not here. Um, although we were seeing numbers, they were strings. 
uh, this area doesn't differentiate strings from integers so they look like numbers but they are not integers that's misleading so we gotta convert the uh, item string to integer so we could edit so in, in my mind this was an integer but it's not so um, how do you convert to integer? You could convert it like this in other languages. See if this works. Is it cause addition uh, not applicable? I don't know. Which dot notation? This one? I'm checking the uh, chat timeline if uh, my Sometimes the like people ask questions, but I uh, see that. So anyway, I think it worked because we had to convert it to integer. So let's double check our numbers. I was expecting the first one to be 13,286. Perfect. The second one is also correct. I think we are 90, 95% done. So now we have to find the maximum in this array. Imagine. So instead of doing inventory output, we gotta do max. This should give us the max. I think this is a new method. Returns the maximum value contained in the array if all elements are of comparable types. So, mini tutorial time. Uh, elements are of comparable type. You could store integer, string, some other data type in the same array. So the elements won't be comparable they will be of different data types this max will work as long as the elements are of the same type so keep that in mind that is the case so this will work so let's try this is the answer and while we are doing that instead of outputting let's do um, all this answer There should be. And uh, now that this is a number, I have to convert it back to string so I can type that label. And uh, here's the answer: sixty-one. Uh, sorry, sixty-five thousand nine hundred and twelve. Right now, I have no idea which elf has that many calories. Sixty-five. Okay, just I had a brain freeze. Sixty-five nine one two. Okay. Sixty-five nine one two. Submit. That's the right answer. You are one gold star closer to collecting enough star fruit. Continue to part two. Yay. If you were following and maybe you're typing the code at the same time. Uh maybe you wanna, I don't know, reach out and maybe show your way of doing it. That might be cool to see how we are tackling this problem. So by the time I calculate the answer to the elf's question, they have already realized that the elf carrying the most calories of food might eventually run out of snacks. To avoid this unacceptable situation, else would instead like to know uh -huh. the total calories carried by the top three elves being the most calories that way even if one of those elves run out, runs out of snacks they still have two backups in the example above the top three elves are the fourth elf yeah the uh, original input this guy and third elf 11,000 calories and the fifth elf sum of the calories carried by these three elves is 45,000 find the top three elves carrying the most calories how many calories are those elves carrying in total okay Th this part of the question or the challenge is actually simple we gotta sort the array so we have uh, the first three indices of the array should have the highest calories and then we just add those three together 
that should be simple enough. Uh, so then I guess there will always be two parts to each question as I guessed. What is that symbol you put in the chat? Like a... Is it like a... It's, it, it looks small, I can't really see. Uh, like a plant, like a mushroom, two things are kind of coming out. Yeah, I'm looking at the uh, confetti. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, congratulations. It's the exciting time. So, HBox container. So, what else can we do here to output the result? I suppose we could always use this, but this looks nice. Um, I'm going to put part one here. And this is going to be part two. Because when you like something, always a part two. Which is not always better. But... Let's change this to VBOX. And because this structure has changed, this is no longer answer. Um, I may as well put part one here, right? say this answer is going to be part one's answer um it's a ball with it seems like two octopus colorful cool yeah yeah i thought there was something organic like so we'll put the part two's answer here again in this function and it's a sorting problem. So we can actually get away with this still here. Let me just, uh, well, let's keep those because uh, maybe we want to come back to this later on. I don't know, maybe I'll walk through the audience and then these are sort of helpers. So you could get the max in an array, whether it's sorted or not. So once we are done with this inventory array, we could actually be sorting it here anyway. And then here the answer will be... Second day's part two's answer will be... We want to get the first three items. Now in JavaScript, we could do split. Something like, well, start at index 0 and take 3 items. I don't think that exists in Godot. Let me look at the methods and uh, see if there's something like that. Um, so there is this back which returns to last element. And sometimes I actually see this in other programming languages too. You pass a parameter here and you say, it's not just the last element, but it starts at the end. And if you put 3, it picks the last three. Again, maybe there is something like that for the front. There is not. Okay, keep looking. We don't want to find. Uh, okay, I skip this, skip this, skip. Up at slides. Okay, uh, that might work. I tried splice, right? Or sorry, I was trying to say splice. I typed split, which doesn't work. So there's slice and splice in JavaScript. They actually have slice. That will do. So we begin at index zero. And we want to end at index 3. The step will be by default 1. Deep is false. Deep is when you have nested arrays. But in this case, we have a linear array. So before I do this, let's, uh, let's do another check here.
Suppose I could have just copied that. Let's run this again. So when you do 0 and 3 as parameters, 3 means it's the third index, so it's inclusive. And you got to be careful. In, in some languages, 3 is not inclusive, so it, it means start here, but take 3 items, which will stop here. So in essence, this should be 2. So 0, 1, and 2 indices included. So that's 3 in total. However, when we sorted this thing, it is sorting in ascending order. So the lowest calories are at the beginning of this uh, array. We want to sort it the other way around. That's why I didn't want to just uh, paste the answer and go type it in because I kind of predicted it would be wrong. Um, yeah, that confetti looked like octopus. Um, so how do we sort the other way around? Or array? Alphabetical order or in the case of numbers, it's going to sort it uh, in ascending order. So here is custom sorter. However, this is another trick. If, when you know the sort is doing it uh, from like lower values to higher values, you could invert the array instead of typing this. This is useful when you want to sort something like well, this is a perfect example. Maybe you want to alphabetically order your items here, right? Maybe. Well, this is just that kind of case anyway, but you have like a complex data structure here. So maybe you want to know which one of these items you have the least. So this should be the first item, so this is going to move to the beginning of the array. 5 is going to move here and 9 will be here with their consecutive uh, item name. Like this as a pair will move, that kind of thing, which is I think what they are doing. I'm not reading, but I'm trying to sort of guess what they might be doing. So th we don't need to do something fancy. I think we could just get away with... Uh, Invert. This reverses the order of elements in the array. So we are just sorting it and then we are inverting it. But then I want to bring your attention to something else. Uh, in some programming languages, the inversion happens in place, meaning this is going to invert the inventory and you'll be okay. In some cases, you have to assign the result of this to another data. Another variable. And the same goes for inventory too. Sorry, the sort too. Is it sorting in place or does it need to be assigned to something else? So, um, if you see void here, which means it's gonna going to affect the array itself. So that's good. Let's double check sort, which I think we already have proof for that. And that's also void too. So if you see an array here, so you're like you give array, it sorts and it outputs an array, you have to assign it to another array variable. We are okay here, inventory is done. So let's get proof of concept again, run. And these are the highest three elves carrying, you know, what we want. I have to uh, output the answer. Should be it but that is actually going to give an array of three items we need to add them up for that we could actually do um, backup calories I'm just making a name that like so this is the input array now that's zero For each elf in this list, that elf's uh, 
gallery is going to be added to this. Right now, the naming convention is all over the place. Like beyond this, just below this line, this doesn't make any sense. Okay, let me just get the answer. Maybe I'll tidy it up. Um, I don't need to be converting it to an integer because that was already done in inventory. We are just adding the elf to back. again. Why? Like naming convention is just weird. Why? Like this is actually food itself, not elf. Let's see this answer. So the answer should be refer to the mighty calculator. Two, two, five. So one ninety five. You just do this. I know. So this is the answer I'm expecting. In here. It's up here. Uh, because I need to convert this to string. So 195, 625 is the answer we are seeking. So that's good. I think we are going to be typing this in here. And of course, how many calories are those elves carrying in total? The first three with the highest calories submit. That's the right answers. Right answer. You are one gold star closer to collecting enough star food. Now is the right time for another octopus. <laughs> we may as well eat calamari tonight. So. So that completes day number one. And share this victory. I'm already sharing. So I'm not gonna go any further and tweet about this. Let's return to our advent calendar. We will tackle number two, but uh, maybe, maybe I should just take a few moments to clean this up. And uh, that also is a good break for me, a good moment to take a very short one, two minutes. I'm going to pick up like um, pick up some water and come back kind of break, but the stream is going to continue. Which means I'm not gonna put on the break screen, so I'll just disappear and come back. Okay, come back. See. Um, bon appetit. Yes. Yeah, got my coffee. So the backup calories is um. That should still be there, but uh. I'm just going to call this calorie and this singular form for calories is calorie I believe since English is my third language mm, excuse me for my mistakes or calamari too yes definitely 
I think probably this is the most tidying up I'll do. So. But I mean, this exercise uh, is good because if this is the kind of problem you are trying to solve using Godot Engine or GD Scripts. And by the way, I'm pretty sure you'll find a lot of people questioning this exercise. Why would you want to use GD Script to? That's not the point, but uh, you know, why not? Like. If this was the problem domain, and you had to use nothing but GD script, this is how it's done. This is one way of doing it, so. Are we having a tartar sauce with calamari? Some wine? <laughs> we should. So this is day one. That's good. Now, On to day two. So I'm kind of curious why there are squiggly lines here. Are they going to paint a picture here? I don't know. I don't remember. I think previous years uh, we might get some pattern here. That's what I kind of think. Anyway, number two or day two. This script is a good and quick prototyper. I think so. Yeah, it's a good. Uh, I could be using Node.js and JavaScript, but I didn't want to. So day two, rock, paper, scissors. The elves begin to set up camp on the beach to decide whose tent gets to be closest to the snack storage. The giant rock, paper, scissors tournament is already in progress. This is a game between two players. Each game contains many rounds. In each round, the players each simultaneously choose one of rock, paper, or scissors using a hand shape. Then, a winner for that round is selected. Okay, rock defeats scissors, scissors defeats paper, and paper defeats rock. If both players choose the same shape, the round instead ends in a draw. Okay, we, we already know that kind. Appreciative of your help yesterday, one elf gives you an encrypted strategy guide. It's our puzzle inputs that they say will be sure to help you win. The first column is what your opponent is going to play. Hmm. A for rock, B for paper, and C for scissors. First column. The second column, suddenly the elf is called away to help with someone's tent. A. The second column, your reason, must be what you should play in response. X for rock, Y for the paper, and Z for scissors. Winning every time would be suspicious, so the responses must have been carefully chosen. The winner of the whole tournament is the player with the highest score. Your total score is the sum of your scores for each round. Yeah, I'm not too confused about the game itself, but the explanation is getting a little bit wordy. Okay. The score for a single round is the score for the shape you selected. Plus the score for the outcome of the round. Okay. Since you can't be sure if the elf is trying to help you or trick you, you should calculate the score you would get if you were to follow the strategy guide. For example, suppose you were given the following strategy guide. This strategy guide predicts the commands the following. In the first round, your opponent will choose rock. Then you should choose paper. Why? 
This ends in a win for you with a score of 8. Because um, 2, because I chose paper which is here. And because I won, it's plus 6. The second round. My opponent will choose paper B. And I should choose rock. Because... Uh, I mean, instinctively, because I want to win, I shouldn't choose rock. But that's what the paper was saying. So that will end in a loss. Okay, gotcha. With a score of 1. I didn't win. That's the 0 part. And I chose uh, rock. And the third round is a draw. Because both players choosing scissors. Because Z was scissors and C is okay. Giving me a score of 3 because this is scissors and because it's a draw. It's here, gotcha. It's 6. In this example, if you were to follow the strategy guide. Okay, we are not trying to come up with a strategy guide. We are going to follow the strategy guide. I would get a score of 8, 1, 9... Uh, plus 6.15, gotcha. What would your to total score be if everything goes exactly according to your strategy guide? And here is my puzzle input. Let's look at the puzzle input. Holy moly. <laughs> okay, so this is in a sense a very similar problem. We are not going to split uh, by double line, but just single line and we will still have mm, the basic array of arrays or array of yeah arrays um, they are separated by space we could be using that as another split so we will have pairs okay and then based on this logic here uh, we'll do some something so we are going to practice something similar but I predict we are gonna use maybe dictionary. Uh, maybe a dictionary might be good to to keep the the uh, score value. Say like rock. Rock's value is this, or winning is this many, you know, points that kind of thing. So, so let's start by saving this inside that's day two's input. Okay. Speaking of which going to duplicate this scene which is here so let's do you shamelessly a2 open it come here a2 i'm going to make this as the um i'm actually going to do something Something else here. If I'm going to stream next week, I should. But if I stream again about this, then I will probably keep adding more days. What the hell happened? I typed days, something kind of happened. That was weird. I, I did something, but then nothing happened. I, I remember typing days. Where did it go here? Okay, uh, user interface. So I think I'm going to need a grid here. Grid container. So this is going to be days. I'm going to instance day one. Two. Uh, let's save this as days. 
This is going to be the main scene. Going to be here. And let's run this. Of course, this is looking very primitive. Um, let's put a panel. Panel will have this. Now uh, you don't do it that way. You do it by making this a scene root, and uh, let's put a day one here. Center. This panel will be four hundred. 300 by 300 that's too much uh, 200 by 100 fix yourself gotcha let's give some space here and Let's just be even more fancy. Margin container. A1 goes inside here. Let this be, I don't know, 10. And behave yourself, pull rect. Have some space. So this is actually day one. Okay. And I don't think I'm gonna bother putting day one or it's just a day this is a day and this is um this is still going to be something like this so that means day two is uh prematurely created so let's uh write that with day one so i'm going to do save scene as overwrite day two confirm you're done so the only question is whether we attach um the script to vbox or not Perhaps we shouldn't, so that means I'm going to do another monkey business here. So remove this, attach your script here, which is where here. And um, that also means this path has changed. Let's not change that path. We are going to do something like I'm assuming every day's answer will be this format, so let's. This is also going to have a unique view. Unique names already used by another node in the scene. So. So you cannot have. Well, okay, let me backtrack. You could have the same node name, answer, answer, as long as they are in. In a structure where their parent names are not conflicting. However, as soon as you do this access as scene unique name, this answer has now become unique enough that it's going to conflict with this one. So this is where and do answer one, two. Now these two can be unique. But the benefit is we don't need to follow this structure anymore. In other words, we can actually type something like Leave. Let me just copy this uh, path here. Uh, copy node path. Am I missing something? I think I'm kind of... Feels like this, this wasn't the way to access answer one.
Okay, what am I forgetting? This is not something I use that many times. Oh, when we access a scene unique name. You could do this anyway. In unique name, I'll just look this up. Uh, Do engine scene unique. I think I forgot how to access uh, unique nodes. That's okay. Number one. Yeah, I remember something with percentage sign, and yet, but I'm trying to use the dollar notation, so I should say get node. Okay. And because uh, dollar is a shorthand for get node, however, that's a function call instead of uh, syntactic sugar. So this is kind of syntactic sugar, okay? So you need to do get node. And here uh, it's going to be zero one. one That's what the authorities are saying, so smart enough. And uh, I should be doing this. Let's give some space here. It's going to be answer two. This is still day one, assigned to day node, which happens to be in scene two. Sorry, day two. I'm going to overwrite day one with this nonsense. And now I need day two as a script before I go any further. Open day two. And this is uh, this is day two on the scene, and all I want to do is this a two scripts. Start your scripts with this something nothing. It's answer one and two. Okay, this is. Day two GD, go to day two. Here's a script, still day one. Remove this. I could have just over overwritten this area. Uh, G GD, day two GD is here. Okay, done. And in here, we should still have this side here. We should have these guys. And I'm going to do five columns because we have 25 so we'll, I'll do five by five so maybe this should also be on 10 10 so now when we run this madness we should also say day two here okay we will have the first day's perfect answer and something and nothing. Now it's kind of become more modular. So later on today, if I have more days, uh, they will be added to the structure. Let's fix your position. That's not going to affect anything. Because the, the grid container is actually adjusting that, but this is so I can see it better. So, day two's problem in its nature is similar. Let's close this. Eat this off. Stuff two. Bye. So, what do we want to do? We want to do something very similar. We want to read this input. It's here. And do something and at that point I said I need a dictionary right so let's create a dictionary and this dictionary will be um, I'm gonna call it meta kind of metadata 
This is going to be a dictionary such that uh, rock equals something. Let's look that up. Rock is one, paper is two, scissors is three. Rock is one, paper is two, scissors equals three. But, and then we have the outcome of the round so zero if you comma lost zero draw is three one is six is there anything else I should be adding um X for rock, Y for paper. I think they should be incorporated somehow. Like one way of doing this is that when you parse this list, you convert these letters to rock, paper, scissors, and then you could be using this data structure or assuming A is or the rock and looking at the value of rock just say well A is equal 1 conceptually A is rock but you don't deal with rock you deal with A that kind of thing the reason why I'm saying that is because rock could be two things rock could either be A uh, or X so X is rock, but A is also rock. What the rock? Okay. Um, so essentially, when you are comparing C against Z, C for scissors, Z is also for scissors. So it's a draw. That's the conclusion. The explanation leads us to so you could be comparing like okay C is scissors Z is scissors I'm playing scissors against scissors or we'll just say C against Z C equals Z that's that kind of thing or Z um, in other words how human readable should this code be that's kind of the question you have to answer as a programmer uh, kind of write, write code for developers like if the next guy is seeing your code or you want to come back and fix your code six months down the road are you going to remember if a, a stood for rock right that's the kind of thing that's when you have to be maybe well let me just convert those letters A and X to rock and I just want to compare rock to rock that kind of thing you may go that way but for now let's skip formalities nevertheless let's write something like A and X are rock so we won't do the conversion work but we are going to do documentation work such as this R paper uh, as a matter of fact I think we have multi-line comment we don't because it's not Python um, there was some multi-line comment in there proto multi-line multi-line comment It's gonna give it a minute or two. That's it. Well, that's what I thought. Okay.
Okay, never mind. So we'll do multi line is like this. I'm making a game with Godot. That sounds good. What's the nature of the game? Do I have any tips for me or for you? Um, I. What kind of tips are you seeking? Um, just keep practicing a lot of tutorials and there are some topics that are not necessarily Godot specific. It's programming in their nature, data structures, general problem solving. You could be reading problems in other domains as well. That's That would be my tip. I've been programming for 20 years, so uh, there are certain things that are very unique to what you are practicing, but it often benefit from other domains as well. Cool. So I mentioned this before. Uh, you just scroll up and find his nickname. Mm. Art Fiend on YouTube. I don't know if, if he's still around or I'm going to do some other session where I'm uh, I'm answering questions so we'll have some other session. Maybe you could be utilizing uh social channels and let me know of those problems. I think my camera is failing. I kind of see myself um sort of teleporting. I am dematerializing there. I think the filter is freaking out with all the putting a lot of dots. Thank you. Good luck with your game and uh, you know share more with us later on if you, especially if you have a Steam page, uh, it would be nice to look at in later uh, sessions. Back to you too. So A, B, C, and X, Y, Z values are accounted for kind of no so right now what I'm gonna do is um, <clears throat> I kind of need to know the value here so that's going to be a Let's see now I should only keep track of these three because No, no, the other way around. I should be keeping track of X, Y, Z. Because the first column is what my opponent will play. But as far as scoring goes, I am counting what I am playing, which is the second column. My opponent will choose rock A. I should choose paper Y. This ends in a win with a score of 8 and because I chose paper 2 which is Y so yeah I don't score A I am only scoring the second column and whether I win or not that's a separate thing in again in this example when the opponent chooses B I'm counting my X and that results in a loss and the same goes for the raw case so I should be changing X, Y, Z. However, in the uh, input, we are going to compare our choice of X, Y, Z against the uh, opponent's first column, A, B, C. We are going to determine the win condition that way, which will be incorporated into the final score with these values. So, let's give ourselves some space. This is very similar to how we did the file reading here.
In fact, I'm just going to shamelessly take this, but I'm going to put file here. Okay, because at that point, nothing important. Nevertheless, I have a feeling I'll keep copying this structure. So let's see if uh, I'm making a mess or not. Good to go. I'm just going to take this and maybe uh, change this uh, structure. Day two starts with this. So instead of else, what do we have? Uh, first of all, we need to split by this, which is just single end of line, and it goes all the way down here. Okay, um, and we don't need to worry about having an empty last item because at the end of this line there is no new line. This is the end of the line. The last item will be by. So that won't be an empty item. When we did do, do this, uh, this is no longer elves. This is going to be rounds. Each round we play those two against each other. Rounds. Then we can do something like for round here is a keyword problem. Or um, each round in rounds. Okay. Each round is composed of two things, which is something like this. Each round is text string, a piece of text like this, which means this should be further split by this. Then we will have uh, an array of two letters and now we are going to check why is our um, word for that our choice against the first letter so here the uh, opponent is playing B which is paper and we are playing Y uh, which is paper so this is going to result in a draw because we played paper uh, we should get two points because it was a draw we are going to get three points too so after the first round we are going to get five points that's the uh... and before i do some useless thing what would your total score be? And now we are going to add all those points up. Good to know. Good to know. This should change to you right away because it's day two input. So this is the um, all rounds. And um, if I'm splitting Yeah, this is very similar to day one. Uh, we are gonna... We're gonna do some other uh, if-else case there for uh, checking the, the win, draw and uh, lose conditions. So a new name. It's not an inventory, but it's something else. So, uh, by, well, it's rounds, right? For each round, we can do split. What am I assigning this into? It's already. Maybe I'll do it this way. This is already my rounds. Rounds is an empty array. 
So in the file itself, when we split it, this is an imaginary round, but we haven't uh, given it a name. Instead, we are splitting each item further down. This is going to be appended to the rounds, which is here. And um, I'm going to keep the get node, uh, the text the assignments. I'll, I'm just interested in knowing what rounds is. Five. So th these are the pairs that I'm talking about. Now, when we are storing these, each array here, right? This is where we can actually calculate the score. Now, now we can say, well, don't append that. Instead, um, as a result of this split operation, you will have access to index 0 and 1, say here, compare A and Z. So what's the result of this game? That's the uh, game. We now for that, we will probably need a function. So, uh, rock, paper, scissors, let's say, we are going to have uh, this, whatever that is, like the first choice, right, against something like this. And this is going to give us one of three results. Um, so, for example, if this equals against, this should be a draw. Maybe, maybe we should do that in uh, results enum, for example, enum. Um, So let's call it game, and we are going to have either bin, draw, or uh, post. These names are kind of getting weird. They are either in uh, past tense or not. This is like a noun. It's a draw. Game is lost or won. Okay, whatever. Um, return game it's a draw. Okay. If they are the same thing, it's a draw. You return right away. That's it. If not, if this equals A And these are the rules. Like so, what is it? Uh, I need to learn about the game. I don't remember. Focusing on too many things right now. So, rock defeats scissors. This is a um, rock paper scissors. This is why. Okay. So a defeats. Uh -huh. C or Z, that's what we need to account for there. Scissors defeats... Uh... Okay, so here's actually what's happening right now. Uh, because I wanted to keep things as A, B, C and X, Y, Z instead of following rock, paper, scissors, now I'm comparing I'm still comparing two things but I have two lists I have a list of ABC and another list of XYZ I'm going to be comparing the choices between the So this is actually good because if 
Actually, no, this is not good either because... So, if this is A, and against is X, they are essentially the same thing. But as far as this line of code goes, this is not going to be a draw. That's the problem. Could I just do this in a smarter way <clears throat> instead of comparing strings? Let's write the rules here. I think I'm going to go with something numerical. That there is something that I like here. <clears throat> so A and X are rock. Maybe this, hmm. this is the score, but uh, in my mind, this is how I'm reasoning. Okay, rock beats, no, actually it's the other way around. Paper beats. This beats paper. But then rock beats scissors. Okay, because I thought, okay, two over one, this wins. Three over this. But then this also beats this. Because I thought if I'm passing this and against as A and X, you have a draw. If I pass numerical values, we could do subtraction, right? We could say 1 minus 1, it's 0. Draw. If, uh, if it's less than 0 or more than 0, we could interpret those cases as win or loss cases. Or we could just do this the string comparison way. Right? There's actually nothing stopping me here. Uh, from introducing the A and B values. So I could still be doing the value here. Say, if this is B and against is Y, they have the same numerical value. So I, I don't need to be comparing strings. So this should be metadata something like this so this solves the equality problem if only it were that easy worldwide So when we pass A or X, since they have the same numerical value, they are going to be equal, so we'll say it's a draw. And in the score calculation, we will access this anyway, so no problem. And also because we will have draw, which is going Can we do something like... Maybe... Ah, we can't because these are numerical values this is zero one two um, there's a way to convert the text the enum key to text then you could put this here and access the dictionary value uh, let's keep things simple So if this is A, but now we want to go with numerical values, maybe. So the, the game's rules are, rock defeats scissors, so A defeats Z, Z defeats Y.
and paper defeats rock. So two is bigger than one. Scissors is bigger than two. Just want to type something here. Um, let's see. I get confused so easily. Rock defeats scissors. Rock. Scissors. If my logic is uh, value-wise, this minus against rock minus one minus against scissors, that result will be minus two. So that's a win condition. How do I quantify so that minus two is a win condition? That's Rock versus A versus C, or Z. Let's not forget the scissors could mean either C or Z, uh, which is okay because they are both accounted for here. If these values will change to this, that's what I'm trying to practice. So this is going to give us this. This is kind of winning conditions, like when we play, like, yeah, we play, yeah, rock against scissors, rock defeats scissors, which is numerically this case, okay? B versus, uh, B is, uh, Paper defeats rock, which is uh, B against A or X. According to according to what I'm trying to do with this minus against, this is uh, zero. A's value is minus one, so that's going to give us one. That's some other nonsense. So I need to be getting something either always positive or always negative. So I would do like, let's do some kind of number comparison. If the result is whatever, your choice against the other thing was good. Or let's just do this the good old way. Okay. If this is a paper, sorry, uh, a rock. Rock defeats scissors. If this is rock, but I should not be checking this. I could be. The reason why I said that is because maybe I should start with if against equals a. 
because against is what I'm playing. But eventually I'll be checking my against. Against. Instead, I could be checking this against my play, which is the against here, right? Then I would register it as my win. Okay, that, that would work too. It's the inverse. If um, rock is played, if against is Rock beats what? Scissors, which is... Dead. Which is something I can actually do this way. At some point I thought I should uh, compensate for against being C as well. But that's not how they structure. So they always make sure that the first column only has A, B, C and the second column has X, Y, Z. Then I'm mixing those two. So that means there's no chance for against to be C, even though C also means the same thing as Z. They're both scissors. And the same rule applies to the other two with their respective letters. So we are always comparing uh, a set of A, B, C against a set of X, Y, Z. They were A to B, C, that kind of combination. That's good. So what's the problem here? This is the problem. So if A is against Z, this is a win. This is, uh, this is a win. But no, this is actually... Uh, This is the tricky part. The opponent played A, we played Z. We should lose. That's the, that's the uh, confusing part. This is a lo uh, loss for me. As far as the game is concerned, yes, A beats Z. But I'm not the one who is playing A. So... I should be careful how I uh, return these. Uh... One uh, solution might be, I assume the variable this here is what, what I play. I should be reversing or inverting my uh, the, the rounds. So I am the one who is playing. other way around if it's making any sense luckily we have a test case I can run this so I'm gonna type a comment here opponent played a but I lost by playing Z. So this is actually a lost. Now I'm probably going to squeeze this inside. In fact, I think uh, right now. Okay. Now, if the opponent played A, and I played Y, what happens? That scenario is... If opponent plays rock I play paper paper defeats rock then I win this is when I win why not one because that's the opponent
played A, but my Y papers. A is rock, so let's just, well, we kind of know it, but uh, let's bring it down here. We know it's rock, it's written here, but. So if the opponent is playing rock, but I play Z, sorry, yeah, I played Z, which is scissors. Uh, rock beats my scissors, I lose the game. And I'm already accounting for draw cases, okay? So, but if the opponent starts with rock, but I chose paper, I win. There is no other third case here because it's like A against uh, what you call it, the uh, X, which is done. Okay, move on. So, shamelessly copy this. Sometimes you gotta be careful when you copy and paste stuff like this because it's easy to fool for. Uh... Oh, I'll just change, you know, letters before you know it. The... You're in a mess because you're not using your brain, you're automating things. Either this is gonna be messed up, this has to be reversed, or these um, if conditions are uh, not quite right. So let's use our brains. So if paper is what the uh, opponent is playing, I could still be playing Z and Y. So that's not going to change. So if we are so by keeping these two the same, we could focus on these two. So don't arbitrarily just swap things or reverse things. If opponent played B, which is what paper, but I played what scissors, my scissors should win over paper. So this is where I say one. If the player, the opponent, sorry, the opponent played E, which is paper. Because B equals Y, now this should be X, see? Uh, but my X, which is rock. And remember, A is also X, which is rock. Uh, the paper will win against rock, so I lose. And finally, finally. The uh, scissors. If the opponent plays C, right away against my Z, which is also C, <clears throat> this should not be here. Let's change this to Y, so it's X Y. <clears throat> if the opponent played C, which is scissors. Um, uh, before I move forward, I should also be updating the comments. Because the comments are now misleading. Okay. Yeah. Let me think about this. I'm collecting my energies. I'm gonna check the stream a bit, uh, see if we have messages. We don't, okay. So if scissors are played against our Y, which is XYZ against our rock paper, pip paper, we should be losing, right? <clears throat> uh, but I lost by playing Z. So this is going to be kind of reverting the first case and I think kind of by logic this should be one now if the player if the opponent plays scissors against my rock my rock will beat their scissors and I win okay. 
and the other draw conditions are done. Now, um, this is a function we can test by maybe using this as an example. This is our input. Imagine the file is here. And instead of giving this as uh, input, we're going to utilize something like this as input. Uh, this should probably be properly Since I'm converting this to an array myself, this is going to come in like this uh, when we open the file, but right now I should be utilizing this instead of the file. So if this is the case, we are going to split by space. We are going to output the runs. Now this is going to do the same thing, except uh, like this is good. There is going to be a similar output with fewer items, exactly three. Uh, this is not helping the solution at all, but now we are going to kick in the uh, score logic. Now, instead of splitting and just appending to the rounds array, we could be uh, maybe we'll change this to an array. This is going to be the zero and the first item in that split will be this and against. We could actually go go with that. Um Let's uh, separate this here. So each round, um, let's um, this is like a game there, right? It's, it's a round. Let's say this is like a it's an each round. Can't change. Uh, we can't chain things beyond a certain point, but this is. Game zero and uh, against this game one. So this is the same thing. So the result here is we are going to do the RPS. This, yes. This is going to append um, win or won, lost, and draw enums into rounds. So instead of having this, we are going to have either 0, 1, or 2. Now, I can actually be smart about that. Let me run it and then I'll just compare it against this because I'm already seeing the uh, structure there. Okay, 0, 2, 1. Now let's do interpretation. So when I so the first case is zero, which is lost. So I lost. So I played Y against the opponent's A. So A against Y is sort of A against B, which is rock, paper. So they played rock. Uh, I played paper. I should have won. That's not good. Okay. 
They play B. They push against my rock. They should win. I should lose. Um, if I lose, two. Oh, okay. Did I just say I I won in the first case, which is good because it's zero. Okay, I think uh, I, I was on the right track, but I said the wrong thing. I reasoned the wrong way. So, the opponent played A, which is rock, against my Y, this paper. I should be winning. So, as far as the array value goes, it should be zero. Perfect. Then... The year B against my X. The year B is paper against my X, which is uh, rock. I should be losing, which is number two in the enum lost. And in the case of C against Z, we are playing the same thing. We should lose, which means I should be getting the same result if we. If we play again A against uh, X or B against Y, I'm gonna just change it here. So we'll have zero one one. Okay. I think we have the proof of concept here. Now we could put this back in, but we want to do something else here. So now, instead of doing the win conditions. Uh, If we win, we pull the, the, this score and add it to the score. We also need to add the score of the item we used for winning. Actually, we, we do that anyway, regardless of winning or losing or drawing. So for each round... Yeah, we could do the proof of concept here too. So. This is good, RPS, okay? So, we're gonna put that inside a match. Because whether we win or not is going to be affecting which one of these uh, numbers we pull out from that dictionary. We could do that by pulling the game condition, okay? If we win, we bring metadata that can one okay this is going to be added to the value of something now that something should already be initiated that's like score zero the score should always be added it could even be just starting with that value it's uh it's whatever we chose like our value is second it's either X, Y, Z, and we already have access to those values. So uh, it's going to be metadata. This, uh, by this, I mean R against is the value. We are always playing the second call, which actually has these values score wise. So we start the score by accounting for the item that we played. And then whether we won with that item or not. The score will be added. And we are going to do the same thing for... So, yeah. I'm going to go from... This order doesn't matter either. Uh, but I'm going to kind of keep it this way. So it's easier to follow. One draw lost. So either win, worse, worst. Okay. One. So that's that. Um, so that's the score. But I think there was a third element in this score. 
what is this? Like, it's usually two. No, it's always two, but because we had three games, we also add them up to. However, as a proof of concept right now, when I run this, I should be getting eight, one and six as an array. Okay. So if this is done, should be adding that score to the rounds, which is now losing its meaning because this is still my array, but I actually changed A, Y, B, X, C. And mind you, I think I made the... those two kind of matter though, because you are actually drawing, but the, the instrument you Used is different, which, which affects the score. So it's not only just losing or winning, but which item actually instrument. So A Y B X C Z. So this is the right combination. So when we run this, we have eight one six. So that's good news. So now we add all those items, and that's the answer. Score is that uh, rounds by that logic? Why am I holding rounds? If I'm not going to parse them. I may as well add the total score here, which starts at zero. If I'm appending ray. Total score will be added this field. Now my total score should be 15. That is the right answer. And that 15 should be written as an answer. We are in the home stretch. We are doing this on example data. This should be replaced with the real data. This. So when we run this, this feed. See. Um, this worked. Let's see if, if, if 15 is going to be. Okay. This is my array. Instead of this any array file get as text split this should be my array couldn't do that why it said something invalid get index one game one so this didn't happen So if this array is empty, this 4 shouldn't run anyway. That's for sure. But this is also coming in empty. That's a problem. Or the split is not happening. Let me just see what each round is. That's good. And when you do the split here, that should be an array instead of a string with uh, three letters. That's also good to...
why is the first um, the second index is the problem like is this not bringing is this not causing any problem like does it output bees yeah this not a good case it is so this line is the equivalent of well split it first here's game and game's first index is whatever xyz Am I not reading this correctly? Okay, actually, you know what? Do nothing but just return the function. I don't want to do anything else but just output the first column's letter. This will work B. And it will do that the very first time, like in the for loop. And now I'm expecting to see why that's good so the second time you run which is like well run it one, one more than one time you kind of run could this be the end of the list is there something like corrupted here it's with y let me open this in uh, text editor and there you go this should not be here so big I don't think this exists for the uh, day one, because we uh, we have the same structure. Which we do. Uh, however, we are not trying to. Yeah, we were doing summation, which must have thought of this extra line as zero, which didn't affect the calculation. But here we are. Uh, trying to access a string which kind of looks null and then the, I think that's the problem. So uh, we can either change the input Which is I think in this case allowed because we are doing this for the sake of not uh, screwing up the Algorithm here. It's not going to affect the end result in a sense So that's okay because we are after the answer here uh, The uh, if you if you don't have uh, a chance to change the input menu like this, you could still be trimming the text as it comes in, which will get rid of this line. Or you could be writing the most sophisticated like case, like oh, if it's not null, do some you know that kind. Of thing. Either way, you need to sanitize your data sometimes. Brings us to. Uh, maybe I, I just need to delete this line. This line is redundant. This should all work. There you go. That's an easy fix. Let me just remove this line actually. Because this is the expected result, right? So the answer is 11,841. Uh, let me just turn off my light. It's okay. 11,841 is the score. Now, because we have proof of concept with uh, simulated like basic data, we would like to think that this is the right answer. So we'll go and type this in the uh, calendar, the page, advent of code page, 11,841. Eleven thousand eight hundred and forty-one. Submit. That's the right answer. So we are one gold star closer to collecting enough star fruits. Awesome. Part two. The elf finishes helping with the tent and sneaks back over to you. Anyway, the second column says how the round needs to end. X means you need to lose. So 
they are changing the meaning of those X, Y, Z. It is no longer which uh, piece we play. And Z means you need to win. Good luck. So to get the same score, it's still calculated the same way, but now you need to figure out what shape to choose. So the round ends as um, talk about bureaucracy. So I guess they have uh, there's bureaucracy among elves, I guess. So to lose, you gotta pick the right one to get the score. Okay. So the example about now goes like this. In the first round, if your opponent will choose rock A, need the round to end in a draw. Why? Because that's the AY, the first case. Yeah. So to get that result, you uh Y was draw, you need to choose rock. This gives you a score of Oh, okay, the score won't be the same. But because now you choose rock, your total will change. The draw is not changing. In the first case, uh, it is... Um, yeah, we cannot uh, utilize the first... Uh, con the first... Uh, In the first day, the second part was easy enough to add to the end of the code. It isn't going to be the same case. We're going to assume this is part one. Uh, by this, I mean this is the part one solution. So instead of knowing whether we are winning or not, we're gonna say, well, we kind of win anyway, but uh, what did we need to pick here in against to win? That kind of thing. So that requires a, a different kind of a solution. So. so we'll do answer one as a function. We'll stick everything here inside answer one. This will not change alt here this is the same thing but we are going to need answer two so let's yep you could still piggyback on rps that is not however in function answer one we are not going to have this uh here we are going to stick that in answer two And I'm going to call this elf. Bureaucracy. So we have the basics of uh, answer to. We are going to take some stuff here. Most likely the file reading and such. We are going to get there eventually. So. I'm hoping uh, maybe in 20-25 uh, minutes I'll probably have dinner, but by then I hope I could finish part 2 of day 2 and maybe come back after the tackle day 3. So let's keep reading. We could still do the uh, first test, test case here, this A, B, C, Y, X, Z. In the first round, my opponent will choose rock. So, need the round to end in a draw, which is Y. So I must choose rock. This gives me a score of rock being 1, and uh, a draw is 3, the score is 4.
So this also makes me think we are gonna need another helper function, which is if my opponent plays something, what should I be playing, which is the output to to be in one of these game states. So I'm going to call this function kind of like a reverse RPS. Um, if this is played, whatever that this is, okay. Uh, Call it game condition. If I should win, that's the game condition. What should I be outputting as my choice or against, right? What should I play against? This so I can uh, achieve the game condition. That's the that's the logic for this function. In a way, it's kind of similar, but um, instead of doing uh, a against z or y, we should do something like well, if the game condition is whatever, what is there this? What should my against be that kind? Of thing. So, um, if which is sort of like match, right? If if I should be winning the game, which is uh, like match the game condition, so that if it's won by me, then there could be some kind of if else case here. If I'm winning. How can I win if so let's look at the one cases here like I win in three cases if there this is a right, then turn y. Right, because I can only win if, in the in the normal case, if they played A and I played Y. So my what I should play is Y. That's how I win. It's this case. I can also win if the opponent plays B. E, as long as I play that if they play C then I should be playing most likely X okay now we do this for lose uh, normally I should be going with draw uh, but uh, I'll maybe squeeze it in later. Uh, I should be going with blues, and I'm saying that I'm typing draw. So when do I lose? I lose when they play A, but I play Z. So to lose, I should be playing Z. If they play B, I play X and lose. And if they play C, I lose when I play Y. So the draw condition is uh, is also very similar. We did that in the uh, 
RPS case by kind of comparing apples to oranges in a funny sense. We were comparing uh, ABC against AYZ because they are not the same letter, but instead I was comparing their numerical values against each other. That's why I'm kind of making it apples and oranges. Uh, so here we are going to assume something similar but the reverse way. So we'll do something like aim draw. If this is what they play, A. Okay. Now we don't need to do monkey business and figure out the numerical value. Like what's the value of A? It's 1. What is 1 in my XYZ case? We kind of know that by virtue of like providing those values ourselves right here it's um, a1 x1 we don't need to do any monkey business so this is very similar to the other one and loss cases except we are going to do one to one match for a you must play x for b i must play uh, y for their c i must play z so i draw Okay, that's the so what should I play against this so I can achieve the game condition so this is it so we are still going to calculate total score but with these new conditions so we are going to have something like this again Start with that shamelessly. We are still going to need total score because there is going to be a new total score. Um, this is going to be similar, except we are not going to run match RPS on pairs, but we are going to be passing the uh, pairs into reverse RPS to get a result something like this as a result sorry not something like this but what should my against be and we'll feed that into metadata to get the score for that and because we already know to we already know the winning condition or the game condition uh, these will be added right away to the score instead like here we, we were starting with the uh, the piece we played our against value as the base score and we were determining whether we won so the game condition score was added as a condition we never knew what that value would be now we kind of know what that value will be we need to figure out what piece we should have played to get that game condition that will be the condition so in a sense uh, structure wise kind of similar but this piece will move into here and th this one draw loss case will be kind of uh, coming in here so I'm going to take this and then do another reasoning so uh, it will make some sense now we will still have this but uh, I'm going to take, uh, take this structure again to see the case the uh, test score okay so let's put this here. That's my case. So I do the splitting. That's fine. That has not changed. But now my here. Um, Against is actually what we are trying to find. We cannot know this yet. This is actually the game condition. That's what the, the new elf is saying. So in A and Y, Y indicates the game condition. Okay. So the game condition is going to be picked up from the metadata, which is the score. Okay. That's my base score, which is here. Then this is going to be. See. 
I need to be passing my game condition. We'll do inverse RPS here. Sorry, reverse RPS. Okay. And this is gonna give me a string. And I don't need to be matching that because in a sense this match is now going inside this function. The reverse RPS is going to give me the against uh, string, which is a value in metadata. So this is also what we are trying to add to our score. But we need to fetch the value from metadata. This is also going to disappear. And uh, we may as well add that score directly total score. So it's as simple as this. Now the total score will be before I deal with elf bureaucracy. Let's do the total score print. So for this see what we get get now this is giving me a string right yes that string has oh I'm not accounting for these uh, that's the problem so the against part is okay so this part works this part doesn't work because the game condition being Y somehow this Y should yeah that's how they formulated it right Y means you need to end the round in a draw so because I, I didn't know the part 2 In my original plan, I assumed Y and B meant the same thing, but in this second part, Y also means draw. Right? Yeah. It's a, that's a yucky position to be in. So what we get here is Y. Here. This should uh, be resolved to draw. Uh, so I could fetch the score here. I guess I'm going to have to bring back the match, which is sort of weird. So let me... Let me first do it this way. Like I will just find the against. This is going to be my game condition here. Is y x y z. It's x. Then we win. So I add to total score win condition, which is metadata win. So it kind of like uh, this goes to the beginning. It, well, kind of. This is replaced by X, Y, Z. That's what's happening. Uh, this is not win. This is one. It's the depiction. The naming conventions. Paste. For draw, it should be draw. And for lost, it should be Z here. Uh, this should work. Except. Get index null on base. This is giving us Y. 
Team conditions why? Um, ah, similar problem that we had here. So I'm passing. Okay, so I should be replacing these because uh, Y doesn't resolve to draw or X doesn't resolve to win. This is still going to be kept game condition, except uh, these values should be X, Y, Z. Um, as I said, uh, if, if we had known about this, we would have structured it slightly differently to have this sort of like more you know, readable or legible, uh, meaningful code structure. We don't. This should work. And 15? 15 is the correct uh, answer? No, it is not. It is actually 12. That's why you run it against the test case. So where did this go wrong? Rock. So I choose rock. So for for winning, that is right. X means what? Uh, X means. X means I lose. Yeah, I did not type it right. Because I started as win, draw, and lose. This is my answer. X is lose, so this should be Z. Um, so I'll do it this way. I still want to go X, Y, Z, so I'm going to change it this way. Or I'll change the order so it's Z, Y, X. This should be 12. It's not. X is lose, Y is draw. That means you need to win. The data. So I include my win score, which is, I add this anyway. So that means Okay, I think I did the same, the wrong thing. So this was also win, draw, lose. To win, it's the Z case. This should be Z. Well, there you go. So this is the correct answer. Uh, I interpreted this wrong. I thought X meant win, so I had the option. So that means I can just plug in the correct array instead of this array. That is actually this file. So this is going to give me a new score. That score will be coming here instead of elf bureaucracy. So let's see. It's 13,000. In thousand twenty two, submit. That's the right answer. So we are one gold star closer to collecting enough star fruit. So that's actually a good win. Let's advance to day three. Turn, okay. I think they are painting a picture here. They said there's some landscape here, right? This looks like shore and this is sea. Okay. Day three. I'm going to read it. Try to understand. First quietly and then I'll read it again.
Okay, paragraph two. Each rucksack. Is two large compartments. All items of a given type are meant to go into exactly one of the two compartments. The elf that did the uh, packing failed to follow this rule for exactly one item type. Okay, kind of confusing. The elves have made a list of all of the items currently in each rucksack. Your puzzle input. Okay. It's, uh, it's here. But they need your help finding theirs. Every item type is identified by a single lowercase or uppercase. That is lowercase a and uppercase a refer to different types of items. The list of items for each rucksack is given as characters all on a single line. Okay, so each line is a rucksack. Okay. The given sack always has the same number of items. Uh, Rock sack always has the same number of items in each of its two compartments. Okay, so each sack doesn't, every sack could have a different number of items. Like this, this line is not the same length as this one, but you always have the same number of items in each of its two compartments. So the first half of the characters represent items in the first compartment, while the second half... So you can divide this uh, line into two. For example, suppose you have the following list of contents from six rucksacks. The first one contains the items... Mumbo Jumbo. Which means its first compartment contains the items uh, this one. While the second compartment here to here. The only item type that appears in both compartments is lowercase p. The only item that appears in both compartments. By observation, yes, and the uh, the cogs are turning now. How would you detect that P out of the set of letters there? The second sex compartments, blah blah blah. And blah 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 is the first and the second half. Okay, the only item type that appears in both compartments. Now, in this case, L appears twice. Both compartments, but it appears also in both compartments, like none of the letters in the first compartment appears in the second compartment, vice versa. But only L appears in both and could also appear more than once. That's also the observation. The third sex compartments contain uh, something something and ah uh, the only common type is uppercase p which is true and in this case unlike the first two cases where in the first one 
there was only one occurrence or lowercase p which appeared once in both compartments and in the second case uppercase L appeared twice in both compartments. Here we have an uneven number of appearances. The uppercase P appears twice in the left compartment and once in the right compartment. That is also okay. I'm guessing this is gonna have something to do with the second part, so we're gonna do some kind of a trick again. So the port sex compartments only share item type we and they didn't actually break it down this time like the first second half so let's see if uh did i say we yeah it is we is here the we is here and somewhere here is the halfway and i can confirm that we is here and here so of course it's hard to kind of figure that out figure out what is actually going to happen by looking at it hence we are writing the algorithm to find out so we don't do this by observation but it's t and then it's s so we have some test data so to help priority to help prioritize item rearrangement Every item type can be converted to a priority. Ooh, okay, so we don't want to just, well, okay. First big part of the problem is to find that uh, item type. Then we are assigning prioritization values, lowercase item types A to Z, are from 1 through 26 and okay 7 to 52 that's reserved for the uppercase item types in the example above the priority of the type of the item type that appears in both compartments of each sack is 16 for p 38 for uppercase l that kind of thing some of this is okay 57. Find the item type that appears in both compartments of each rucksack and you do that for the input, puzzle input. And what is the sum of the priorities of those? So um, we are going to be given a number of lines full of text like this. We are going to process each line, divide in half, we are going to look at the left half and the right half, and we are going to find one letter that appears in both compartments. And then we are going to assign a value to that type. Then we are going to add all those uh, priority numbers. In this example case, it should add up to this. Once we are done, we'll run the algorithm against the input. We'll type it in. This will happen after I take a short break and I'm coming back. So I don't think uh, I will put the stream break screen on. Yeah, so see you soon.
Okay. At some point I should look into why the camera or the filter is dematerializing me. I feel like there's a lot of uh, dots, some noise appearing. Anyhow, so let's get going. The music's still playing or is it just it's a quiet piece, so let's skip to this piece. Okay, so maybe this will be more cheerful. I'm... So we need to download the puzzle input as usual. There's a lot of entries here, so let's uh, call this day three input. And by the way, I'm going to structure my Godot scene. So going to have this scene. It's fine. Let's save this as... Uh, can't I do it this way? I want to do it this way. Duplicate. It's going to be day three. We're gonna have a new piece of script. Uh, most likely some structure here. I should also do here. Day three. Fine. Let's open day three should be updated with A3. Okay. Then in day or days, I need to be putting days three. Um, now day, that's fine. Uh, if these were all coming in, they, they would actually be, let's call this day one. change this to day three the script should say something like I don't know let's say again go with answer one and two because uh, I think they did something kind of weird so answer one is answer one Answer 2 is answer 2. Nothing uh, special there, so let's do answer 2 and cut this crap. Done. So this metadata is also going away. This is our day 3. And part 1, part 2. This should run and say this, uh, except um, I copied from the line above. So answer 1 and 2. So oh, good. So what else can we do right now? Let's 
far as this structure goes, nothing but uh, keep working. So we have this uh, structure. So first thing we should do, we should just take this as our input. And uh, the um, number of characters in each line is even. So you could uh, divide it in half. That's not something we should be concerned about. But we need to know the half. So we need to know the number of characters in each line. So we could do the like half the value is a split thing, right? So for that, I'm going to briefly investigate string functions. Okay. So in the methods, they're gonna have most likely something like left. So we're gonna take the left position, right? So returns a number of characters from the left of the string. So that position will be the uh, length half. And similarly, we are going to have right. Right position. Returns the right side of the string from a given position. Now, th this is, uh, the interpretation is kind of two ways, which leads to the same result. It doesn't. Uh, let me say what I thought might be correct, and it isn't. So if you say, if you think right is gonna give you, let's say, like you call right with like position five, thinking you start at the end of the string and you take the last five characters. That's not what this function is doing. This is starting at position five, uh, five and going all the way to the right side. So anything after position five. So that's very important. Now, in our case though, because we are picking the position right in the middle, uh, this is okay. We have to, of course, do the checks such. Speaking of which, um, let's start by putting Um, our dummy content here. Okay. So for this kind of thing, I think I'm going to open my good old friend, XR. What I want to do is something like I want. I kind of want to pick everything on the same line and then just uh, do end of line as a separator-ish. So I think I can get away with this. So do this. That's your selection. It's easy to add one more line here. That's fine. Uh, so what what is it doing? Oh, this is actually the, the uh, what is What is the structure that, is, that this capturing is done against, right? So you need to do one, which is what is captured now. And here you gotta put comma. That's it. That's going to give this. Now, if you don't have this, the last line will not be in uh, double quotes so you kind of need this and the only caveat here is because you're always ending with a comma so that there's no conditional here so you gotta remember to remove this when you or I put this in an array so bar it's called this dummy so this is array so just remove the last element so that you don't have anything null okay so we'll use this as a as dummy content but structure-wise, it is actually starting pretty much like this. So we have the A3 input, we have file open, and we normally read this and dump somewhere. 
in a for loop. So we will do something like this, except right now I want to use my dummy content instead of this. And I'm going to take this structure and put it here. And I'm going to store this for future use. And this is my dummy content. Now with my dummy, for each dumb thing for now, uh, I, I will probably call them as uh, entry. Maybe I'll call it like entries and this is entry. For each entry, make sure they call it rucksack. Okay, maybe I'll do that rucksack. So let's just do it rucksack. And since it's kind of redundant, well, or mouthful to say rucksack, in each sack, we need to figure out compartments. So the. Uh, the sack will have length. This is the uh, string. This uh, is going to be halved. And this is going to be used in left as a parameter to take all the uh, characters until the position. This is the first compartment. So this is uh, first compartment, as far as the explanation goes. And the second compartment is right. And this is going to be the exact. This is going to be exactly the same thing. Now, okay, we we may have to worry about the index numbers. That's why we are doing it this way. Now, every time I have. This, um, this structuring happens. Perhaps I can just do a basic print call. I can do like, here's my first comp. And I'm going to put some space. I'm going to do a second. I don't want to put those two in an array and I'll put an array. This is good enough. So when we run this, for each one of these sacks, I'm going to have something halved, uh, separated by some like space. Okay, so, so now we gotta go and check whether this first compartment starts with V and ends with R. Second compartment starts with H and ends with P. Let's double check that. So here uh, we have. Something that starts with V, uppercase J, okay, so let's just do it. It ends with uppercase uh, W, ends with lowercase R. It's correct. We have H, H, C, S, blah, 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 P. So assuming that's actually correct, and I don't want to check every single one of them, I'm going to check the last one perhaps but they didn't give us the last one so the, the latest they gave us was the case p mm and then p which seems to be correct and then lowercase v lowercase g which is so i would say this is working just fine because uh, it's zero indexed and we said right length half uh it wasn't taking, uh, in other words, it's doing the right thing. So you don't have to worry about moving the index one over. Um, so that is good. Now, uh, so we halved it. Okay, the entries are halved. Later on, we'll replace dummy with this. So nevertheless, let's see if we are going to get uh, this result. So we gotta do something right now. Okay. So when we are done with the next phase, we should be getting lowercase p, uppercase l, uppercase p, and then all lowercase vts. Then we will worry about their numerical values uh, summing up. Most likely around the time I'll be. We'll see how far I'll go tonight. And maybe next week I can do 
Uh, assuming I'll finish day three today and maybe tackle day four, I might. Let's see how it goes. So how do we find... How do we find the same letter in both compartments? Now this is actually... Uh, this might be a good dictionary. Just coming up with like um, okay ideas, dumb ideas, and uh... so imagine we start with the first compartment. The first thing I see in that compartment is E and then uppercase J. So how many times have I seen lowercase V? Is, is one. So I store the left compartment's letters and the, the number of occurrences, perhaps, um, in the dictionary. So then I do the same thing for the right compartment and there's a separate hole I could be going through all the elements of the first compartment to see if they exist in the second dictionary. And one of them will. This is sort of okay solution. That might work, but can we do better? What if when we pick we? Why do we need to store it in the? Can't we just check? Uh, well, does we exist in the second compartment? I believe there is already something like that in string methods. Uh, we could do find. There's even write find or whatever and. Uh, I think, uh, because in the dictionary case, I was going to use has as a key, like does second dictionary have a key that I know exists in the first dictionary. So this is in a sense, well, is the letter I'm picking up the first compartment, big string, does that exist in the second string? So this is not good because we don't care whether it actually begins with it. We kind of want to, uh, whether we can find it or has it or includes, you know, sometimes that's the name in other uh, programming languages. We don't have include, I believe, but we have already something like find. So. So, what if we find it? Is that a good case? If we try to find B, it doesn't exist. Keep searching. I, I think the benefit of this is that as soon as you don't find it, you just uh, skip to uppercase J. And then you come to P, and then you say, okay, gotcha, P exists. In fact, it's the last element in the first line. And at that point, you could stop the loop, because now that you found one match, you don't need to keep finding. Because this exercise is not about finding multiples yet, or multiples in a sense that you, you don't look for two sets of Letters that exist in both compartments. Letters 
there's always going to be one letter maybe occurring multiple times in both compartments, but you don't have more than one set. That's a separate problem. Maybe it's not going to be an issue for the second part of this question. But uh, so we don't need to do this in a dictionary. So we could do something like, well, uh, I strongly believe what I'm going to suggest is not part of Godot 3 yet. They were discussing this thing called uh, empty split, which is this. So far we had a divider. We would always do end of line or space as a split delimiter. But in JavaScript, this would split all the letters. This doesn't exist yet, as far as I know. But let's say, what if it existed? Like, let's say it exists and I'm wrong, and I would like to be proven wrong for the sake of, you know, progress, and why not? This will make my life easier. So if we see the first batch here, all, like, it's an array, comma separated, whatever, see that. We don't. So it doesn't split by empty. Which will happen in Godot 4. Before we try to do it like this, var character in first comp. Okay. We could try it this way. And uh could in fact just try to do this. Because this is tempting to write too. So what's the problem here? Uh, that's actually a data type. Sorry, a uh, method uh, keyword in other words. Um, let's call it character. Other character. So that's doing the job. Okay, so for each character in the first compartment, we are interested in knowing whether that character exists in second string, which is the second compartment. Um, okay. So if the second compartment, uh, we could maybe do um, string uh, casting, right? I believe this already cast section to string. Yeah, it's already string, so. Maybe I didn't have to put this. Uh, I was hoping to get this help anyway, but I, it was going to bring, I believe. Um, so, as doesn't exist, as we discussed, we don't care whether it's, it begins with or ends with. What we want to do is whether we could find it or not. What are we trying to find? We are trying to find character. And I'm not going to pass this part because you want to started from the beginning so if find returns something which is an integer most likely minus one will give us uh, not, not good result that's usually how it's done uh, because if you, you find it in the first position that's zero index minus one is not found check against minus one but if you can't find it I keep looking in other words, if you do find it, which means it's not minus one, then you could stop looking. Now, sometimes it's tempting to write it this way. Well, if you find it, assuming this is going to be true, because like, well, if you find it, it's going to be at a position like at one, two, whatever. But, what if it finds it in the first position, which is zero, and zero will be a false statement here. Can't do that. So, the, you, the best thing you can do is perhaps this, maybe. If it's more than minus one, or if 
it's anything zero or more. So let's go with this. If second uh, thing has this, sorry, yeah, if it has it, it's not minus one. Um, we store this somewhere for now. Let's store it. Uh, var. What are they trying to find here? Um, the. What did they name it? Wrong item. Something they called it. Uh, something. Um, well, I'm go. I'm going to call it contraband. Okay. This is the contraband array where we are picking that uh, contraband item. So contraband will be appended. That character that is uh, problematic. And when we are done, we are actually outputting the contraband for now. So when when I run this, I should be getting. I guess I'm doing this in in each uh, for loop. Yeah, this should actually run here at that level so uh -huh. this is good uh, but um, premature when I found it I appended it but I did not terminate this uh, for loop as soon as I find it, I break the portal. That's not what I did. But that, I should have done that. So P, uh, lowercase, then uppercase LP, and lowercase VTS, as we expected, they are here. So that's a good start. Now we can worry about their um, numerical values. Uh, and how do we do that? Let's see. If this was a uh, normal letters, then we could have used the um, this this guy. Character sixty-five. Well, the ASCII representation of letter A. Um, uppercase letter A is 65. We put it into lowercase a, you add 32. So any letters lowercase is its value plus 32. So then some other bizarre numerical value like this is essentially the euro sign. This is how the computers translate your strings into numbers so that you can turn into binary code and you know internet is a happier place you transmit data faster whatever um can we do some trick here so assuming uh, 97 is a lowercase a so then 98 is lowercase b and this is going all the way to lowercase z with some numerical number So, in addition, 65 to um, 65 to, I forgot, um, I think to be in six letters, right? 91 is going to go. Uh, Z. So let's see what. Uh, let me just copy this. Uh, dump it here. I kind of want to compare something. What did they do here? So let me take this because this range here uh, makes me think uh, we can get away with some something here. What I'm afraid is that they kind of reverse like that. These have higher values, the uppercase priorities, whereas 
the uppercase strings have lower numerical values. So they did the uh, trick there, I think. Yeah. So is the uh, documentation suggesting this is the inverse of ORD, which is when you give this, which we could give, because we now have access to this, that is going to return 65. So assuming in our parsing, we got uh, uppercase A would return 65, like Godot would return 65, okay, which is also here. That 65 should resolve to R27. Isn't there 26 letter? Yeah, it is 26, okay, sorry. It's a uh, uh, minus plus one, okay. Um, so we could do something like that like get ord the letter gives whatever that number is 65 minus 35 sorry um, whatever the difference is this is 27 this is 65 something is going to be subtracted so then when you get uppercase z we're gonna get some number minus that should result to this that's correct however the big question is this so what, what what's that number let me uh when we get 65 what do we is 38 so I'm going to write some pseudocode whatever number is or character if I do 38 this is gonna take my uppercase uh, character value and convert it to this range it's going to map it and will it do the same thing for the lowercase so if I'm getting lowercase a and I'm passing it into ord that will yield 97 and 97 should be mapped to 1 so 97 minus 38 is not even close because this logic is reversed so the um, the most manual solution would be to create a dictionary where you map the values, say lowercase a is uh, 1. So whatever value you get from this contraband, you could just look that up in the dictionary and those will be the values. So uh, that means we are going to have to type 52 letters in a dictionary and their corresponding numbers refuse to do that one thing maybe we can do is to know whether a letter is uppercase or lowercase if it's uppercase then we can do this minus 38 to fit the values into this range if it's lowercase then we change this factor so that we map anything between 97 and whatever is the value for lowercase z into this range. So let's look up whether we have something like is lowercase or uppercase. I believe in JavaScript there is something called is underscore lower and is underscore upper um, but what we can do is uh, we could 
What if we got uppercase A? We could still do some kind of trick like this here. If we got whatever character we got, say we looked up its uh, character uh, code. If it's less than 97, strictly less than 97, it's the uppercase range. So it's uppercase A to Z. Anything including 97 and over is lowercase. That's the if and else case. We don't need to do, like we are kind of writing our own is lowercase. So we got the contraband. Uh, we don't need to be running anything against the contraband array. Like we don't need to create another force structure here to process contraband. We could be just processing the letters as they come and we could be adding the uh, values anyway. So in the end, perhaps this contraband will turn score. But this is the character and we just do something like, well, if the character, what was I saying, 97? Strictly less than 97, this is the uppercase. And in cases like this, maybe, why do we have some magical number here, as if it's uppercase? Let's comment that one out. If it's uppercase, then we pass uh, I'm actually doing the wrong thing, sorry. If the ORD, which is going to give us the number, to check against 97, then uh, the, um, the, if the character lowercase p, which is going to fall in the, into the else case, let's actually establish this fact uh, here the character that i'm appending which is what we see here in the output right in the new contraband output what i should see is lowercase lowercase sorry lowercase two uppercases three lowercases i'm going to change this to lowercase lower okay and uh, there's going to be an else case here This is gonna go away. We still wanna break here. So, uh, the other way around, upper, uh, it should have been lower, uh, yeah. So if the character is uh, lowercase p, right, or the, It's gonna give in, okay over 97 that's probably where I uh, okay anything inclusive and 97 is the lower case lower to upper three lower okay. now I just wanna double check if the stream is uh functioning flawlessly I think so doesn't hurt to check Connection problems and such. Uh, it's the live. Okay, good. So when it's lower, uh, what is the real value of that uh, p so whatever value you have okay now is the time to find that uh, in the else case what we want to do is uh, to store the real value of that so this is the uh, uppercase which is 
the 38 magical case. So the uh, ord character. Okay. Minus 38 is going to map us to the correct value. Now, in um, in the lower case, we want to map 97 to 1. So we want to subtract uh, 96. So that should be this way. So now the new contraband will give us the real numerical values as we expect them. So 16 for lowercase p, 38. Uh, fortunately, I cannot. That's here. Let, let me go back and forth. 38, 42, 22, 20, and 90. And now the rest is just taking the sum of it. So we are uh, in a good place. Uh, this is not lower uh, uppercase anymore. This is lowercase uh, because I switched the uh, condition. Um. So the sum is okay. I think we are done, like because we just need to take the sum, right? That's it. That's what this question is about: taking the sum and finding 157. Um, and so instead of appending it to an array like this, we could just add this to sum, which is our total score again, some kind of score, or do they call it score or um, priorities? This is what they. Those poor elves. So their priorities will be increased by uh, whatever this uh, character is. Let's keep those elves happy. And uh, in the end, um, we're gonna output the priorities. That should say 157, that's the right answer. Uh, that means um, this is going to be... Uh, done that way. Now, of course, the missing link, as far as we are concerned, or the exercise is concerned, is to use the real data. So we're not gonna use this, this is the test data. You're going to use the real value, which is going to be 82, 52. That's the real value. 82, 52, submit. That's the right answer. So we are one gold star closer. Five star job today. Good. Let's continue to part two. Okay, so. The elves come to you with another issue. Are we surprised? No. For safety, they divided. They are divided into groups of three. Every elf carries a badge that identifies their group. For efficiency within each group of three elves, the badge is the only item type carried by all three elves. Um, that is, if a group's badge is item type B, mm. check the illustration. Okay, I think this is a good time for me to wrap up. I was planning to have dinner and come back, continue, but it's late enough that I'm going to conclude the stream because dinner is happening. I won't have that much time to conclude this, so we'll continue this exercise some other time, so 